Namaste. Well, today's sutra makes an important point that I've made many times on this channel, but it seems like people never get it. And this is about Aum, the Pranava. It's called Pranava because it's the life of the transcendentalist. So let's see what Ramana Maharshi has to say about it. Devotee, what is the purport of the teaching that in Pratyahara one should meditate on the Pranava? Maharshi, the purport of prescribing meditation on Pranava is this. The Pranava is Aumkar, consisting of three and a half matras, A, U, N, and Ardha Matra. Of these, A stands for the waking state, Vishvajiva, and the gross body. U stands for the dream state, Taijasa Jiva, and the subtle body. N stands for the sleep state, Pragna Jiva, and the causal body. The Ardha Matra represents Turiya, which is the self or I nature. And what is beyond that is the state of Turiyatita, or pure bliss. So I think I should take a moment here to explain the significance of all this. First of all, Pranava is also called Aumkara, the Aum letter. It has its own distinctive script in the Sanskrit alphabet, which is not found anywhere else. This is because it is an unprecedented combination of three long vowels, a, u, and m. So the people who mispronounce it, om, are completely off base. It's a, u, n, with a nasal pronunciation at the end. The dot over the M represents, it's called Anuswara. And that means it's the representation of the Bindu, or the dimensionless point at the center of the Sri Yantra, which represents Brahman. So this is all highly symbolic and very important because it's linked with the three states of consciousness, or actually the four. Waking, dreaming, deep sleep, and Turiya. So each transcendental letter in the Aumkar represents one state of consciousness. And then the dot over the M represents Turiya, the fourth. And finally, the Ardha Matra, the half matra, or half a beat of silence at the end, represents Turiyatita. Turiyatita means the state which is beyond everything. So try to understand, Aum is a picture of, or representation or symbol of consciousness in one letter. This is why all Vedic mantras begin and end with Aumkar. This letter is written in the Vedas more than any other letter because it begins and ends each mantra. So how important is that? But people gloss over the correct pronunciation 
and they just say, um, you know, <laughs> which is completely disempowering. The mantra, it's ah, ooh, mm, and then half a beat of silence. And the last nasal N is pronounced for just as long as the other letters. That's why you notice at the end of every video, we go, Aung Tat Sat. See, this is the symbol or significator of consciousness, all four states of consciousness. Oh, but there's more. Let's go on. The fourth state, Turiya, the state of I nature, was referred to in the section on meditation, dhyana. This has been variously described as of the nature of amatra, which includes the three matras, a, u, and ng, as maunakshara, the silent syllable, as ajapa, as muttering without muttering, and as the advaita mantra, which is the essence of all mantras, such as Panchakshara, Namashivaya. In order to get at this true significance, one should meditate on the pranava. This is meditation which is of the nature of devotion, consisting in reflection on the truth of the self. The fruition of this process is samadhi that yields release, the state of unsurpassed bliss. The revered gurus also have said that release is to be gained only by devotion of the nature of reflection on the truth of the self. So many people make the mistake of thinking that there is no place for devotion in Advaita. But here is the master of Advaita, Ramana Maharshi himself advising us to have devotion towards the self, devotion towards this pranava mantra, aunkara, that this is so important. Huh? And by the way, the word matra refers to meter or rhythm in Sanskrit mantras. Sanskrit mantras have three parts. The text, or mantra as it's called, the rhythm, or matra, and the intonation, or swara. These three have to be done perfectly to even begin to appreciate the beauty of the mantra. But over and above that, one should meditate on its significance that ah, ooh, mm, and the half beat of silence is basically a picture or a map of the four states of consciousness plus Turiyatita, which is beyond the state of consciousness which has no object. In other words, Brahman. So we should understand that this Aumkara is very, very important. And especially considering the question that uh, Aumkara is the object of meditation in Pratyahara. Pratyahara, as you recall, means withdrawal of the mind or the attention from the senses. Well, that implies that the mind or attention is concentrated on something else other than the senses. And this object, other than the senses, is Aumkar, the letter Aum. So, first of all, the correct pronunciation, A, U, N, and then the correct meter, Matra, a, u, n, and then half a beat of silence. So three and a half matras. 
This is very important. If you're chanting it aloud, that half a beat of silence would be the in-breath after chanting Aum, Aum, like that. But when chanting mentally, which is what should be done in Pratyahara, then it is a moment of stillness of the mind, a moment of silence. Isn't it ironic that when someone passes away, goes beyond, we honor them with a moment of silence. This is because silence represents the ultimate, the truth which cannot be spoken or thought of, that which is beyond the beyond, Brahman, or Nirvana, or Nibbana, whatever you want to call it, which is non-conceptual. It cannot be understood because there's no mind. It cannot be spoken of because there is no vibration, no change. It cannot even be thought of. It can only be experienced by the meditator in deep consciousness and meditation. So this is what Ramana is urging, and this is also what we urge, that you do these practices. Don't just listen to these videos or watch these videos as entertainment or information. Watch them to guide your practice. Because Ramana Maharshi, being the preeminent Advaitin of the recent age, is giving us a practice which is suitable for our nature at this time. So we should definitely pay close attention to his words because he is really the master. He is the one who can guide us out of this dark forest of the material world. Huh? We have to look to a guiding light like Ramana Maharshi because he is experienced. He has seen the truth. He knows the truth. He is the truth. So when he gives instructions, especially when this book, the Vichara Sangraham, was spoken by him, or he actually didn't speak it. <laughs> he drew the characters in the sand in front of the cave where he was meditating in silence for seven years. So try to understand, he was in a very high state at this time. He was able to give definitive direction to his disciple, to his devotee. And here he is recommending devotion. One should be devoted to Aumkar. One should be devoted to Turiya and Turiya Tita. Because these are, or uh, they represent, complete deliverance from material suffering the escape from material existence. And how else will we be delivered except by following these instructions? So don't view these as simply entertainment or information. View them as guideposts on the spiritual path to shape your practice and bring you to ultimate success in self-realization. Aung Tatsat, Aung Shakti Aung.